Hey, what's up, everybody? This is DJ Martin, church pastor at Park Ford Church. Welcome to our ongoing midweek teaching series on the character of God. Each week, we're looking at different attributes of God's character. And throughout the series, we're asking two big questions. The first part of the series, as we look at specific character traits and attributes of God revealed by the scriptures, we're asking, who is God? And then the second part of the series, we're going to be asking, based on these character traits and attributes of God, how does he act in the world. This whole series is being framed by the Tozer quote from the knowledge of the holy that what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. If you know me, then you know I uh, really care about spiritual formation. And one of the things that this quote gets to is the idea that as we think about God, as we talk about God, as we meditate on God, as we hold thoughts about him, as we share thoughts about him, what's coming in to our minds um, and what's in there when we're thinking about God is saying something about how we relate to him, how we feel about him, how we think about him, how he shapes our actions and our beliefs. And so what comes into our minds when we think about God, Tozer says, is the most important thing about us. And so today we are going to be talking about God's omnipresence. God is omnipresent, which means he is everywhere, which begs the question, if God is everywhere, why do I still feel lonely sometimes? It's a really important question to wrestle through and ask. The big idea of, of this teaching, of this doctrine that, that God is everywhere, that he's omnipresent, is that the Bible teaches that God is always in all places. Let me read that again. The Bible teaches, the scriptures reveal, they teach, they share that God is always in all places. <clears throat> He's not confined to time or space like you and I. He's always, at all times, in all places and is holding all things together. In fact, this is a repeated theme of the scriptures throughout both the Old and New Testaments. God is omnipresent. The psalmist asks, where can I flee from your presence? And the resounding answer is nowhere. There's nowhere I can go that you are not. This, of course, is a quote from Psalm 139, verses 7 to 12. Here, David, maybe going through a particularly hard time of life, he's, he's meditating on the presence of God and, and his own life. And you can imagine him thinking about the stories of when he was a, tr a child watching over a sheep or when he... Uh, fought against Goliath or when he was on the run from King Saul and he was in caves or when he went and hid out with the Philistines. He's, he's going through the index of his life, all these, these stories. And in every situation, he says, wow, you were there with me. You were there with me. You were there with me. He writes, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. Tozer in his chapter on the omnipresence of God, he says the word present, of course, means here close to, next to, and the prefix omni gives it universality. God is everywhere here, close to everything, next to everyone. Few other truths are taught in the scriptures with as great clarity as the doctrine of the divine omnipresence. Look at this one phrase right in the middle of this quote, God is everywhere here. I love that phrase. It's so good. Everywhere that there is a place, God is here. Everywhere, every person can say God is here because he's holding it all together. He is everywhere. For me, this is one of those attributes of God that is the most uh, strengthening, encouraging, comforting to think about, partly uh, because of the nature of life and how disembodied life can feel in the digital modern world where we're all spending so much time on screens and social media and phones and, and all of that, but partly because of my lived experience, having moved all over the country, having moved uh, and lived in several places all over the world, 
there's so many places I wish I could be. There's so many people I wish I could be with that I just can't because I'm finite. I'm one person located in one place at a time. And if I could have a superpower, a superhero power, I might ask uh, for the ability to be omnipresent, to be in more than one place at a time. So I could be with both my sisters who live one in Montana and one in Wisconsin. And I could be in the Philippines where I spent seven years as a child, or I could be in St. Louis where my family is from and where I grew up or, uh, you know, traveled to different places. But obviously I can't, I have to be here, wherever here is for me. And, and so resting in the omnipresence of God is actually really helpful and really comforting thinking about the fact that even though I can't be simultaneously in all of these places that I wish I could be that God is there and so when I commune with God I'm communing I'm having a relationship and connection with the God who is in all places at all times who is everywhere here and so while it's really rare for my extended family to be in one place at a time the moment I begin to pray, uh, that prayer is already at that place uh, with that person. And so I pray for my sister who lives in Montana, and that prayer is already there because God is already there and, and vice versa. And, um, and so resting in the omnipresence that God is everywhere can be extremely comforting for us as we wish we could be in more places and with more people than is possible for us. But it does beg the question, like I said at the beginning, um, what if I feel, what if I feel lonely? <laughs> what if I, what if I still feel isolated, even if I'm choosing to believe this truth? Well, that kind of gets to the idea in our culture <clears throat> that our feelings define reality, right? And so that's that's a popular cultural narrative that that my reality is my ultimate reality or my feelings are my ultimate reality. But we know if we're, if we're Christ followers and we believe in the, the truth of the Bible, we know that uh, while feelings are really important, I don't mean to do away with feelings. I'm a, I'm a pretty emotionally emotional person and, and seek to be in touch with my emotions. Um, my emotions, my feelings do not define reality. So for instance, just a silly example, there could be someone who I look at and I think, wow, they, they think I'm the greatest thing ever. And I can live like that's reality when in, when in reality, <laughs> they might think I'm a total fool. Um, or I could think that someone has a, a problem with me. And, and this has happened to me before. Maybe it's happened to you where you thought someone had an issue with you or you thought someone was angry with you. And it was only later that you came to find out that they had no issues with you at all. You just totally misread the situation or misperceived it. Our, our feelings don't define ultimate reality. Um, they are important, but they don't define ultimate reality. And so it's, it's definitely possible for you to feel alone. It's definitely possible for me to feel isolated and lonely. Um, while God is very much with me. It, it's possible for me to feel like God has abandoned me, and yet that is not the truth. Uh, the truth of the word of God is that I will never leave you nor forsake you, is what the Lord says uh, to his beloved, to his children, to you. In Colossians 1, in the beautiful poem that the Apostle Paul writes about the supremacy of Jesus, that he's above all creation, he starts with the phrase, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before ever, anything was created and is supreme over all creation. Then a couple verses later, he says he existed before anything else. So we re he returns to that thought that God is eternal. And then he says, and he holds all creation together. So Paul combines these two thoughts that, that God has always been, he's always existed, and he holds all things together. And the imagery here implies a uh, set of hands that are reaching around the cosmos, so reaching around the trillions of stars in existence, as well as your very soul, your very spirit, my very heart, my very being. And God is holding it with his hands all together. Now, God is not a person. He doesn't have a body uh, like you or I, but his presence, his spirit, his goodness, his love, his very essence is reaching out and holding everything together. In an article on the Gospel Coalition website, John M. Frame, uh, in his article titled The 
omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresence of God. He's speaking here about the omnipresence of God, and he says, so how can we tell when God is present or absent? Scripture's answer is that God is present everywhere, because as we have seen, his power and knowledge are everywhere. If every event everywhere takes place by God's power, and if he has exhaustive knowledge of everything his power has brought to pass, then certainly he is not absent, but present in each event though his presence is not quite the same as the presence of physical beings. So God's omnipotence and omniscience actually imply his omnipresence. We know that God is present everywhere because he has all knowledge and because he has all power. He's holding it all together at all times, and he is the source of all truth and all wisdom, and all of these things, his eternality, his, tr the, the triune nature of God, all of these things that we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks, they all um, imply and build up to the fact that God himself is everywhere. He's omnipresent. Romans 8, where the Apostle Paul is almost certainly thinking of Psalm 139 and what David wrote there. Paul, uh, thinking back on his life, and the circumstances of his life being shipwrecked and stoned and beaten and rejected. He writes to the church in Rome, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death, all of, all of which Paul himself went through? As the scriptures say, for your sake, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. So when you think about these truths and these scriptures that we've touched on today, a few questions for us to reflect on. How do you deal uh, with the cognitive dissonance between the omnipresence of God and feelings of loneliness and isolation? So I talked about that uh, earlier in the teaching. When you're feeling uh, when you're feeling alone, when you're feeling isolated, how do you deal with the, the dissonance between that feeling um, but what the scriptures talk about and what I hope you believe that God is with you, even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, David writes in the most famous Psalm, Psalm 23. Um, how do you deal with that, that dissonance? Is there any situation or place that you can think of that God is not present? I can think of a whole bunch of situations where it's really hard for me to imagine God being present, whether it's genocide or abuse or kidnapping of a child or, you know, just the awful things that take place. Um, but the reality is that even there, God is with those people as they suffer. He's, he's with them. Um, so, yeah, what do you do with that? Uh, is there any situation or place that you can think of that God is not present? And why do you think God's omnipresence is an important doctrine? Um, I hope that today's teaching, the scriptures, uh, the quotes, these questions have encouraged you and challenged you to continue to grow in your knowledge and love of God. And I appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Go with God. Be blessed.